as we are gearing up for the first official uh, public alpha testnet, one of the things we've been putting a ton, a ton of effort into is the development environment for Canon so that we can iterate quickly, experiment, onboard external developers, just have the entire thing be not in the core, not in the hands of just the core devs, uh, even though we are the ones that we get today, but really get everyone involved uh, with as little friction as possible. So under dev.pocketroll.com is where we have a lot of our in progress documentation uh, for the uh, for the technical parts of Canon. So not to economics, but you know, if you go into protocol and you want to understand how the protocol works, there's a lot of things here. And if you want to go and start learning about the different actors on Canon, you've got a lot of things here. If you want to run a local net, we've got a video of myself talking, but then we also have very um, a long list of instructions uh, of things you can really just copy paste. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole thing today, but what I did want to do is just kind of show how easy it is to spin this up. Um, kind of, let's end. This is going to be about five minutes of me uh, spinning up a gateway, uh, a gateway, spinning up a supplier and then sending a relay end-to-end. -end. You know, just to expedite things, I already compiled all the protobufs and all of our mock here. So you can see that everything's complete. And even though we do have some flaky tests on occasion, there are some tips in the instructions so that we can get to a good state. And then uh, all I did was go here and run this command called make local net up which builds a bunch of containers. You know, everything's dockerized. Everything's in a local Kubernetes cluster. It's the latest and greatest technology that uh, we love today. And what that does is spin up literally everything we need. So I press spacebar. And what you can see here is that we have, you know, an Ethereum node running, like an, a local Anvil node. We have a gateway running. We have a validator running. We have a relay miner running. And if you go into each of these, the beauty here is not only, you know, do we have logs here, but we also have, you can click on each of these and it takes you to a Grafana dashboard with metrics and observability being exported for all of them. This is like, I know I'm, I'm going, like, I'm going through this really fast, but each of the things I'm describing, like having this one command that spins all the stuff is huge. Having the visibility into these logs is awesome. Having the Grafana dashboard here is great. If we, for example, go uh, into the code and I can say, like I change the line to validated and completed claims and I, and I save the file, we can see we've got what's called hot reloading. So Immediately, you know, we change the code and everything locally is going to recompile. The Docker containers are going to rebuild. Everything is going to restart. And all I did was save a file. I mean, kind of what this is going to enable in terms of development and iteration speed is uh, immense. Kind of the next cool thing that I wanted to show is how we can scale up uh, our local net. We've got this configuration file, and I'm going through all this really fast because my goal here isn't to uh, dive deep on any specific component, but just show the breadth of tools that we have to enable developers. That was a kind of a quick side tangent. So going back to this local net config file, like if you look at this, let's say we want to scale the number of relay miners to start simulating something real. We have, I'm going to set this to two. We go back here. Boom, we've got a new relay miner already, you know, loading up, building document container and being launched locally. Uh, same thing goes for the gateway. Boom. Uh, I save it. And there, we already have another gateway being deployed in our local environment. Uh, before I go into uh, running these manually, in case you need even more fine grain control, something that is, um, I also think is really cool is our end-to-end -end testing framework. 
that I kind of just want to show off because the team's been putting a ton, a ton of time into it. And I'll just pick one uh, as an example. Settlement. Okay, so let's let's go with govern, governance params as an example. Uh, at the moment, we're adding governance params so we can start testing different variables on the network. And you can see that we can have end-to-end -end integration testing and load testing done through uh, natural language, right? So like given that the user has something and given that the state of the network is X, we can start sending requests and start validating things. And then like all of this can be run literally by running make test end-to-end. -end. It's, you can imagine us using ChatGPT to form tests like this as well. You don't even in the future not potentially not need to know how to code to run it, to create integration tests or at least verify things end to end. Um, you can pick when it comes to tokenomics and you want to validate that certain things work in a certain way. This is really going to enable a lot. So it kind of just just to cover over what we just saw is you know scaling a local network, having full visibility and observability into everything that's going on. Having uh, like pretty detailed instruction set to go through it as well, and I wanted to go even slightly deeper uh, into the code with more fine grained control in the terminal and the CLI because that's what developers like to do by running a gateway and a supplier myself and then sending an end to end relay. So I did cheat a bit uh, in the sense that I have you know the commands prepared here uh, for the sake of speed. But let's say I want to kind of check the uh, the height of our local Ethereum node. Currently, I'm sending this troll request into the abyss, so it obviously fails to connect. But uh, let's just say that I start running a gateway. So uh, in the future, we'll dive deeper with a whole explanation to what an AppGate server is. Uh, not going to do that today. But what I'm doing here is, manually running a gateway uh, in my CLI. And then I can send a request to that gateway. So but you, you can see that even though I keep sending the request to the gateway, uh, because I'm trying to act as a service that's not supported, uh, that there's that has no suppliers on this tiny local network, uh, it doesn't work. Right? And you can see the application is getting an error, the gateway is getting an error, but luckily, uh, thinning up a relay miner, which is a supplier, is also just as easy. Uh, I kind of already put together the config locally. Uh, and all I did was copy them from here. Like everything is copied straight from this very long quick start guide, which is publicly available. So we send this relay miner. We set up this relay miner, which is uh, I'm like a local node runner. And as soon as we start running the same curl command, so getting the ETH block height, uh, it's every other one. I'm, I'm not going to go into why that is uh, right now. I can answer that question if anyone's curious. But here we are <laughs> literally getting a response of the height of the local Ethereum node from an application to a gateway, to a supplier, um, through the power of a CLI, which developers potentially want. But you can also use the UI if that's how you wish to um, kind of if that's your preferred way. And there uh, and there are pros and cons to either one depending on the problem that you're solving. Uh, so it's re really kind of developer specific based on the task at hand. And if we actually scroll down, like this is this is this little diagram represents what just happened which is kind of a curl command going through an update server, a relay miner, like the entire flow. I literally just spun up the services and the entire network locally. It's a one validator network. And hopefully it shows like how simple, lightweight it is. I think, I personally think this is the best, uh, at least Web3 development environment and tool set I have ever seen. Um, I hope that we'll get to present it at 
from conferences or workshops in the future. And uh, I will kind of uh, stop there for questions or anything else. Um, but before I do, I want to call out that like the entire protocol team has been hard at work, not just on the business logic over the last few months, but also creating and enabling this. And uh, I think it's a really great piece of uh, engineering that I'm uh, I'm proud of on behalf of the team. That was a lot in about five to ten minutes. Um, but yeah, we're going to be opening up bounties to um, implement both, you know, core business logic for Canon as well as more future looking uh, work. Um, one of the things that uh, I'm personally excited about is what this will enable in terms of experimentation with tokenomics. So there's going to be base level tokenomics, but we can see it evolving and we're going to have the dashboarding for it. We're going to have the telemetry for it. We're going to have really everything we need to make sure that it's not just the core dev team that can contribute to the protocol, but it's, but it's everyone. Uh, whether you're a core protocol contributor or uh, a gateway developer and you want to experiment that sort of thing, really like enabling the entire stack to test and develop end to end is uh, what we're doing here. Yeah, and the last thing I'll say is if you have questions uh, after the fact, because I will need to jump off shortly, please use the Canon general uh, channel on Discord. That's kind of where I monitor it, Shane monitor it, monitors it, uh, as well as the rest of the protocol team. Thank you, guys. What Shansky said in terms of uh, uh, this really being revolutionary tool for protocol developers. Quick story, my brother started to look into Shannon uh, yesterday and deployed his own local net and was just completely blown away that he was able to quite literally get going in just a few moments. Um, I actually know that there's been a number of contributors that have already started deploying with this quick guide. And the fact that they can legitimately get all actors, get all visibility simultaneously through essentially two commands, that really is a crypto first. Um, granted, there are teams out there that will have, uh, you know, large scripts and, uh, you know, large systems that, you know, allow them to deploy local test nets, you know, with one click or something, uh, but that's inside of a specific system. What's great about this is anyone can deploy it with literally, as he was saying, just two commands. Yeah, this, this really opens the door to uh, folks who want to do bounties, folks who want to get into the protocol itself, people who want to participate in Shannon, a super easy way to just immediately get in and start playing around, start learning how it works. So major kudos to the protocol team for building all of that. Thanks, Shane. And just as you were speaking, one other thing that I remembered is that we already have pretty good instructions to use Docker Compose for testnet, but very, very soon, uh, kind of the Docker container for that will come out as well, uh, so that we can start pushing that forward as well. But this is specifically target at uh, local net developers on your on your machine, even when you don't have a, a network connection. So you know we can keep developing on, on a long plane flight. So that's what I like to do that too.